the two main causes? You do? Okay, I'm not going to quiz you too much, okay? Sugar, okay, high animal fat intake. Those are your two big players. And also, I'm going to say high animal protein. During World War I and World War II, when sugar wasn't available, the rate of diabetes went down. Okay? There you see it happening. Uh, so clearly sugar is an issue. Fructose, I already said it's indirectly related. It's not safer. Uh, fructose really is associated with a higher rate. Besides how fast it, it got, you know, from 18... 1980 to 1997, there was a 2,100% increase in fructose and a huge bump up in that. Um, and I mentioned that. See, I kind of laid things out and I'm reviewing it for you, okay, as we go through it. Um, the, so fructose disorders a lot of our regulation. It also creates glycation product, uh, products. And what happens is that if the glucose or fructose binds unnaturally uh, with protein and deactivates it. And that includes the DNA, includes hemoglobin. That's how you measure, really, for diabetes, one of the tests. And it's, oh my goodness, um, because it greatly accelerates the glycation process. And as I say, it's, well, I didn't say this, but it's 10 times more active in creating ages. Uh, a lot of cancer cells, particularly pancreas, loves it. Um, inflammation of the brain, which is key to Alzheimer's as well. So it mix up the insulin and leptin signaling, as I explained. Um, and it doesn't block ghrelin, which is the hormone that lets us know we're full. Maybe some of you notice you're not always able to block that cycle, but fructose blocks it so we don't get the feedback system. So a lot of people with fructose end up being overweight because it, that system isn't turned off, okay? But glucose does that, it does turn it off. Okay, so um, this is what we're explaining. It will block uh, the leptin, which says stop eating and stop craving sweets. Uh, we can handle about 15 to 25 grams of fructose without getting out of balance. The average American runs about 81 milligrams, okay? Um, and here are the things I mentioned them before. Heart disease, hypertension, gout, obesity, which we just explained because it's not turning off the ghrelin. It says stop eating and it mixes up the leptin insulin singling kidney stones, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is two to three times higher, okay, it's worth understanding, in people who are having a high, higher fructose diet, which unfortunately tends to be more of your fruitarians than your people do eating a lot of fruit. Brain inflammation, I mentioned, because it's 10 times more active, uh, overstimulating the glia cells, obviously cancer, and accelerated aging. So it's, it's a problem. Fructose is not an alternative. The truth is, the only thing it doesn't seem to raise blood sugar is stevia, okay, is, is probably the, the, the main one. And there's just a little bit more. But okay, this is uh, soft drinks. They're a big problem. Artificial sweeteners are a huge problem for people and they really do increase your rate of diabetes more than regular soft drinks. I'm not recommending soft drinks. One of our things in Africa is, um, hey, go to water, because a soft drink is seen as a nice social thing to do when somebody visits. Stop that. Let's go back to clean water rather than soft drinks. So, so what happens is the artificial sweeteners are broken down and they stimulate they confuse the gut bacteria and they increase the rates of diabetes. Um, aspartamine is like a, a big player. So it, the, the data is kind of interesting. Okay, one can of soda per week increases the rate of type 2 diabetes by 33%. Two cans 
50%. And if you go to synthetic aspartame, it's going to be at least, at least 15 to 60% higher. I, I give you variables because all well, the research is about trends. It's not, a, it's not such hard data all the time. Okay? So, but about 15 to 50 percent, depending. Here, I say 60 percent. But I give you the range, you know. Um, so, this is what Robert Lessel says is, is that if you're, you're doing soft drinks, you're 10 times more likely uh, to get type 2 diabetes. That's a little bit higher than the results are suggesting, but it's, it's in there. So, I call it diet diabetes. Diet sodas. Sodas are bad. Diet sodas are a much bigger problem. So we'll look at 18, uh, you know, percent, um, 25 percent reduction when you're not having the soft drinks. So you're getting the idea there, okay? So here I say 25 to 1,000 percent increase in diabetes. So there's some variability here. But whatever it is, even 25% is big. If it's a thousand grand, it's, you know, like last week was saying, it's way big. Okay, so here's a, a, a point I want to make is that insulin secretion, if you, if you kind of look at that, the blue is glucose and the red is insulin. So what we see when we go to beef, you can see it, and eggs, and fish, you'll have a lot more over-secretion of insulin, which eventually leads you to insulin resistance, and that's the key. So here we got the diabetes thing, saying this is good for you. Well, again, you go in the wrong direction, you do end up in the wrong direction, and they're right. It, if you do this, it's incurable, for sure, okay? So this is a combination of 12 different studies. It basically says 35 to 50 percent people eating meat, fish, chicken, increase in type 2 diabetes. That's what we're talking about, the overall thing. So a quarter pound of, of beef raises your insulin uh, as, as much as a quarter pound of straight sugar. That should be making the point, okay? If you're doing cheeseburgers, it's it's even higher with the different things. So I want to get to, uh, that's that the overview, and I want to get to uh, animal fat toxicity because it's kind of newer in people. How many people have heard, just from my own feedback, about animal fat toxicity to the beta cells of the pancreas? A little bit. One, there's one person, okay. So that tells you this is new information. It's good to know. So, it's a major player, and that's why we're looking at 35 to 55, 35 to 50 percent more type 2 diabetes than people eating meat. This is one of the big players, okay? Um, and what happens is, on the physical level, it tends to block the insulin function both out of the cell and inside the cell. It makes our muscle cells insulin resistant. It doesn't seem to do it with plant fat, that's what I'm saying. And uh, that's our, our, our problem. So the insulin resistance is a key, one of the keys to building diabetes, okay? Uh, <coughs> and it may build up over years. It just takes a while to get there. So what happens to the pancreas is the bodies get resistant to insulin, the pancreas keeps pumping out more insulin, and then what happens is, is that the, the beta cells get exhausted. That's, that's what we're talking about, okay? So, and, and also fat begins to build up in the pancreas. And because uh, the animal fat's too much, and so the, the, it builds up first in the muscles, then in the, in the liver, and then um, very low uh, density lipoproteins then get pushed out of the liver and they tend to accumulate in the beta cells of the pancreas. So lots of problems. So 
you can actually think about type 2 diabetes as an excess of animal fat in our organs, in our cells. It's not the only thing, okay? Because as they say, they actually kill the beta cells of the pancreas, particularly fish. It's the most, fish fat's the most toxic, okay? Uh, so we have insulin resistance and a failing pancreas from the, from the fat. Now, you can do, add one and one and get two. Obviously, obesity, fat, was going to lead to increased insulin and really leptin resistance. And the high insulin is associated also with promoting cancer. That's actually really important. But that's not our topic right now. So we got saturated animal fats a problem. Trans fats, which are more common in animal, are a problem. Animal protein by itself is a problem because it has leucine in it, which specifically attacks the beta cells of the pancreas. This is a new piece of information. Leucine, methionine, they attack and destroy the beta cells of the pancreas, which explains again why there's more diabetes, 35 to 50 percent more in people who are eating meat. Okay? Um, the other thing is heme iron in the animal protein creates a lot of free radicals. And free radicals tend to uh, create ages. And, and ages uh, accelerate the rate of diabetes, okay? Because it's oxidative stress and chronic inflammation. So the iron is doing that. That's one of the reasons people think why women live longer, because they have lower iron in their system. That changes once uh, women go through uh, uh, menopause. That, that changes. But up to that time, there's less iron, so you're having less oxidation, less free radicals, less diabetes. So the advanced ages, advanced glycation end products are all increased with oxidative stress and inflammation. So we've got trans fats are a problem, and um, I call them glycotoxins, but these things stimulate inflammation. And these are the markers the literature shows. Tumor necrosis factor, C-reactive protein, which is what I use to test on everybody, and vascular adhesion molecules. C-reactive protein tells me how much inflammation. Our people come in highly inflamed, and even by the end of three weeks, the inflammation is a, you know, often returns to normal. Uh, it's dropped by threefold in three weeks. Um, so, that's the problem. Now, leucine and methionine, I just mentioned it. How many people heard of the mTOR pathway? Okay. That's the optimal path, that's the pathway for optimal longevity. Okay, that's a key thing. And optimum prevention of cancer. The average need, uh, depending on your range, is 35 to 70 grams of protein a day. Now, what happens is that the leucine and methionine overstimulate the, the, the thing and, and um, we, we get an imbalance in the mTOR pathway, which is also increases diabetes. Okay? So, uh, so the leucine levels are much, much, much lower in vegan diets. Okay? A joke here, nine pounds of cabbage or a hundred apples a day, the equal amount of leucine you get from eating meat on a daily basis. So it's pretty, I mean, it isn't, it isn't a vegan diet, right? That, but it's nowhere near as we're talking about that. So this is good to understand.